Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing imagination machine. And there you have it, the imagination machine. But that's not all. I can control the machine with this imaginary remote. Off. On. Off. On. Off. On. Off. I can also control the machine's speed with this large invisible wheel. On. Faster. 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 All the way to 11. Oops, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, luckily, we also have an imaginary hydraulic lever for emergencies just like this. Now, not only can the machine stop and go, run faster, run down, and start again, but because it is made from 100% pure chunks of federally approved imagination, the machine can make anything in the world I ask it to make. Imagination machine. I would like to see a piano. Maestro Lucy will now play Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Oh, bravo, bravo. <laughs> Imagination machine. I would like to see a tree. The Nature Channel now presents the annual life cycle of the tree. In the springtime, the rains fall and the tree blossoms. <coughs> then the hot summer sun shines and all the leaves on the tree wilt. <coughs> then the autumn winds blow and all the leaves fall from the tree. I said all the leaves. And the tree stands naked and cold all winter long. Till the spring comes and the tree blossoms once again. And that is the life cycle of a tree. Imagination machine, I would like to see a dog. Oh, he's friendly. Look, his tail's wagging. Was this your dog? Yes. Can he do tricks? He can. Sit, Trick. sit, boy. Good. Down. Yay. Shake. Speak. That's great. You got any more? Play dead. Oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Imagination machine. I'd like to see an elephant. Okay, how about a suggestion from the audience? What would you like to see? A television set. Oh, imagination machine. I want to see a television set. Okay, I think we're gonna need a, a screen and a remote. Great. Imagination machine. I would like to see a car.
Lui Plink Pouf One last one, imagination machine. I would like to see a roller coaster. Ladies and gentlemen, this souvenir photograph will be available for only $29.95 at the booth by the gate on your way out of the park this afternoon. Great job, Imagination Machine! All right. Now, not only can the Imagination Machine make objects, it can also make stories. Imagination Machine, I would like to see the story of the three little pigs. Now this story needs a little help from the audience. Whenever Susan holds up a sign, just do or say whatever's written on it. Let's try one. Kaboom! Great! I think we're ready to begin. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. Pig number one, pig number two, and pig number three. These pigs decided to build a house, but each pig had his own idea about what to use to build the house. The first pig said, I think we should build a house out of straw. The second pig said, I think we should build the house out of sticks. And the third pig said, I think we should build the house out of bricks. Since they couldn't agree on what to use, pretty soon they had a big fight. Brick, no, no sticks. sticks. We have sticks. to build a house They got louder and louder. Even the audience got into the act. Finally, the narrator said, Stop! And they all split up and went their separate ways. The first pig started to look for some straw to build his house. He looked to the right. He looked to the left. Finally, he turned around, and right behind him, he saw a large pile of straw. He walked right up to it, and then, in order to keep the story moving forward, he decided to use a magic trick to build his house. Borrowing a word from another fairy tale he remembered, he waved his hooves and said, Abracadabra! Immediately, the straw formed itself into a house. Wow! The pig went inside, and just when he got there, you know who showed up. The big bad wolf. The wolf walked around and around the house, and then he said the line we all know and love. Let me in, let me in! The pig inside the house replied, Knock by the hair on my titty pin pin. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down! And he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew on the house, and it fell down! Crash! The pig inside ran for his life with the wolf right behind him. Freeze! Meanwhile, the second little pig was looking for some sticks to build his house. He looked up. He looked down. And finally, he looked right in the center of the stage, where he found a pile of sticks. He, too, used a magic trick with a word from another story. Bippity boppity boo! Immediately, the sticks formed themselves into a house. When it was done, the second little pig went inside. Just when he got there, 
The wolf and the first pig unfroze. And the wolf chased the first little pig around and around the stick house. Finally, the second little pig opened the door for the first pig, and they both hid inside the house. Once again, the wolf and the pigs acted out their familiar parts. Let me in, let me in. Not by a hair of my chitty chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew on the house and the house fell down. Kaboom! Both pigs ran for their life with the wolf right behind them. Freeze! Finally, the third little pig appeared on the stage, looking for a pile of bricks. He looked in his pockets. He looked in his wallet. He took out a $10 bill and gave it to the narrator. Just kidding. Finally, he looked at the center of the stage, where he saw a large pile of bricks. He, too, said a magic word from another story. Shazam! Immediately, the bricks became a beautiful house. Awesome! It even had a high-security electric door on the front. The third pig pushed the button and went inside. Of course, just then, the first two pigs unfroze and ran onto the stage with the wolf behind them. They went round and round the brick house until at last, the two pigs ducked inside. And you know what's next. Let me in, let me in. Not by a hair of our chin chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew on the house. But it did not fall. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew on the house again. It still did not fall. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew one last time. But because the house was made out of bricks, it simply would not fall down. Hooray! Now by this time, the wolf, who was sadly rather a heavy smoker, was so lightheaded from all the blowing, he collapsed on the floor and lay very still so as not to distract the audience. Inside the brick house, there was a large metal pot. <laughs> the pigs put the pot in the fireplace and then lit a large fire under it. When it was ready, the wolf recovered from his faint and stood up. Then he climbed up on the roof of the house, and in order to get in, he jumped down the chimney and landed right in the pot. Ouch! But you know, after a minute, the wolf started to get used to the water. It was hot, but not too hot. The wolf, who had never had a bath in his entire life, began to enjoy it. He reached for a bar of soap and washed under his arms and behind his ears. Meanwhile, pig number three took out his iPhone and called for help. Help! Help! There's a wolf in a hot tub! Come quick! And it wasn't long before help arrived. Did somebody call for wolf exterminators are us? When the wolf heard that, he jumped out of the pot and ran off stage, out of sight of the audience. Everyone on stage looked at the spot where he'd gone. They were completely and utterly amazed. For this was the first time this story has ever been told. The wolf made a clean getaway. Imagination Machine, I'd like to see one ending to a play, please. <laughs>